Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the screen is visible. So uh, today we'll be talking about uh, container store uh, development. Uh, and the agenda is the following. Uh, we are going uh, to discuss uh, what challenges, challenges do we have uh, in the process of software development and uh, what solution can be used to address them. Uh, we will review the general concept of uh, containerized environments. Uh, we will uh, review uh, integration with uh, uh, VS Code, Visual Studio Code, uh, integrated development environment. Uh, and also uh, we will check out uh, one tool, which is called DevSpace which is the tool for uh, microservices development, uh, which streamlines uh, development and deployment into Kubernetes cluster. Uh, okay, and then I will uh, be glad to. So uh, the challenges that we have. Uh, during the software development process, uh, we uh, often have uh, inconsistency uh, of the environments. Uh, somebody can use uh, one version of a uh, certain runtime, other can use another version, and so on. Uh, we have this dependency he headaches when uh, uh, different uh, developers can use uh, different dependencies and that and that causes the problems uh, all this uh, leads to slow slowing down the iteration cycles because we do not have consistency we uh, do not have standardized uh, set of tools uh, libraries dependencies and so on uh and as uh, as a consequence it, it leads to uh, uh challenges in the deployment process because as always a uh, developer could say that on my laptop it works smoothly but in the, in the uh, when it comes to deployment the application uh, even cannot start so the solution that could be used for that is uh, so-called containerized environments or uh, containers for development. Uh, the foundation of this, uh, like the core idea of this solution is the containers uh, uh, themselves. So uh, using that, we can streamline the development workflow. Uh, well, just to give an idea, if you guys, uh, as I hope, are fam familiar with the containers concept, uh, you should understand that container allows us to uh, bundle all the tools that uh, not only the application needs to run, like no, maybe not tools, but maybe some binaries, dependencies, libraries, configuration files, uh, everything that application needs to run. But we also can uh, package into the container uh, the tools that developer needs. We will talk about that in a bit. So, uh, okay, uh, as I said, I'm pretty sure that uh, majority of you uh, familiar with the uh, containers concept, but let's just recap just just in case. So uh, the container uh, the containers are uh, isolated workspaces uh, that use a limited set of hardware resources. Yeah, so we have the uh, host operation system and, and, and container uses just part of, of, of the hardware resources of that host operation system. 
uh, a container bundles what an application needs. Here we are talking about like more operational part of this of this concept. So we need co container to give application everything that it needs to run. And uh, it ensures consistent executions so we can uh, repeat the application executions uh, uh, as many times as we need as we need and uh, across the platforms across the different environments yeah so uh, and what is the container image again this is a little bit different uh, as you probably know than a container itself image uh, basically consists of uh, layers we have this ba base uh, image layer uh, which basically represent the certain operate operating system for example Alpine Linux here and then we are adding more layers with, with some tools some uh, binaries libraries and so on as many layers as we need and here we have this uh, when it comes to running the container itself here we have this writable uh, writable uh, layer where container can write some files and yeah and when uh, container uh, gets deleted uh, this uh, this data this data are removed yeah this is like yeah, important to to remember so uh basically the image is a snapshot of container uh, which contains everything an application needs to run again and it is reusable it is stored in some image registry. It can it can be stored locally, but it's more convenient to store it somewhere in, in Docker Hub or in any other container uh, um, image registry, like uh, Google Cloud Container Register or something else. Uh, so, uh, yeah, this is just to recap. And what is the containerized development environment? Uh, so, uh, it is built with containers, as the uh, name suggests. So we are using container to create a containerized contain, uh, con uh, development environment. And includes uh, uh, tools, libraries. Uh, so again, uh, it includes everything that application needs to run, just like, like normal containers. But also, it includes uh, any tool uh, uh, that the developer uh, needs to do uh, his or her job. Uh, it is consistent and isolated, so we are not inter interacting, we are not disrupting uh, the activities of other de developers if they are doing something on the same post. Uh, and it is portable and shareable. So again, like with regular uh, container, we can package everything into the image, and we can uh, we can publish it into the to the uh, image registry, so anybody can use it. Okay, uh, just give me a second. So the demo. Uh, The task is this. Uh, okay, sorry, uh, sorry about that, guys. Let me uh, emphasize something else. So yeah, we can we can see this diagram, where uh, we can compare the production compa uh, container. Uh, as I mentioned, it only needs uh, as little uh, tools as application itself needs to run. Uh, if it is compiled by binary, for example, then it only needs the operating system, sort of an operating system to run. Uh, again, uh, we can use and we uh, do use containers for CI needs as CI runners, for example. And in that case, we uh, might need some runtimes, shared libraries, like builders, uh, 
to, as decays to tools like that. Also, we, we might need uh, Git client, for example, and, and other things. And of course, in this case, we, we would need the source code of the application. Uh, while here we might not need the source code if it is a binary, Go binary, for example. Here we do need the source code to, to build the application, right? So, and uh, this inner loop needs, uh, assumes that here we should have everything that a person, a developer or team of developers might need to work with, with, uh, with the, uh, to develop the application. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, the demo that I'm going to show you uh, is this. So we have a, a small, simple AWS infrastructure. We have a jump host, which is expo exposed to the internet. And then we have this uh, Docker engine uh, machine, let's, let's call it that. Uh, where we can execute the uh, uh, ad, ad hoc script that we are going to create uh, written in Python. And uh, this script could use uh, some uh, Python models, for example, bot 3 to get some information about uh, EC2 instances here in this infrastructure. So uh, we are going to uh, create and dockerize this, uh, uh, this script uh, put it into the into the image uh, like together. Okay. Uh, just uh, maybe you have some questions guys. Meanwhile, I'm preparing the runtime. Not at the moment. Okay. Uh, so just give it a second. Okay. Uh, before uh, connecting to the uh, to the cloud instances here, let's uh, uh, let's look into uh, at the tools that we are going to use. Okay. Sorry, sorry. One question. Yeah, sure. So are you going to use uh, the remote Docker uh, dev environment, right? We uh, can call it. We can call it that. Okay. Imagine situation uh, when uh, we okay as as uh, as as always in the cloud. Uh, we should be ready that this instance, for example, uh, uh, could gone. It, it could be deleted, right? And it might be easier to, uh, for example, to spin up this instance with only Docker engine running engine. it. Then, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah but uh, you, you, you will connect your IDE uh, through the SSH to the Docker uh, on that instance, right? Uh, I'm, 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 uh, I'll be connecting to uh, via SSH to this Docker instance. So I'll be running uh, commands here mm -hmm. or this instance, right? Oh, okay. This is correct. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, just give me a second. Yeah, here we have an extremely simple Docker file, which we are going to use. Uh, it will uh, basically create an image and add to this image the uh, Python runtime and, and both of the library. Uh, this is it. Uh, so I'm going to connect to that instance, and basically we can we can execute uh, th this command this uh, that script uh, from my laptop also. But in that case, 
uh, we need to uh, sorry we need to authorize uh, we need to uh, create this uh, access key and uh, ID key, and and we, we we need to inject it. But here we can uh, we can uh, assign a ARM rule that would allow any process on this, this instance to uh, to do whatever is allowed to to do for that role. For example, to uh, interact with uh, AWS API. So in this way, uh, this way we are going to we are going to uh, get some information about these instances, right? So okay, uh, let's get to this. So the script is is really uh, simple, right? So um, now I'm going to connect. to this IP. I just need to replace this IP uh, address with the new one, and hopefully I'll be able to connect to the jump host. And from the jump host, okay, what I would need, I would need this uh, private key Uh, this private key uh, to be copied to the to the jump host. You, you might uh, be wondering why do I need this jump host, and then I from that jump host I need to jump to the to that Docker engine host. Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, but uh, that's kind of I tried to follow kind of best practice. I did I did not want to expose this machine here to the uh, to the internet. So what kind of for the security says, okay. So uh, I'm going to connect to this host. I'm going to change permissions for this uh, private key. And now I need an IP address of the, of, of the, Docker engine host, which is right here. And I'm going to connect it. <clears throat> okay. So here we should have, hopefully, yeah, Docker engine up and running. Uh, I think we don't have any images yet here. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a Docker file right here. And I'm going to paste into it these two instructions that I showed, right? Okay, and if I run Docker build tag, which should be, uh, let's call it Alpine, Alpine Python. Uh, yeah, and I'm going to use the uh, current directory to get all the stuff that build, Docker build needs. Um, uh, okay. I'm doing something something wrong. If if uh, somebody knows what am I doing wrong? The uh, verb is build instead of build. Build oh build it's build. build it's build it's build. Sorry guys yeah now it's gonna do what is uh, what it's supposed to do yeah right. So uh, now we have an image. Uh, locally with, with all the tools that we need for now. Okay, uh, now I'm going to run, uh, I'm, I'm going to create a Python script that would use uh, 
bought a library and get some uh, some details about the machines right so i'm here i have the i have this uh empty uh, sublim text editor so i'm going to uh, create a script right now okay so um just give me a second Going to import Boto3, it's import. Uh, let's save this file. Okay. okay. Yeah, here. Let's give it a name like this. Okay, uh, so um, I'm going to create a function. I'm going to reuse the existing one actually. Let me remove what is not needed here. <clears throat> we are not going to filter by a VPC ID. We're just going to uh, pick up all running instances just for simplicity. Uh, so yeah, here I'll Expand a little bit. So here we're using uh, uh we initiating bottle three client, uh which actually uh which connects to the uh, API uh, or AWS API and get some information about instances. Uh then we are creating this uh list of dictionaries where uh, uh this information about the instances like instance ID. Uh, instance ID, let's make it instance ID. Uh, it's keeper, private IP address, name, uh, and uh, operating system if, if it is in the tags. And then we are going just to, we are going just to print it out. Oops. Um, instances right we are going to convert it into the string and we are going to call this function here which is get instances right so okay hopefully it will work and here, okay, uh, just for the simplicity, I'm going to uh, region. Or okay, I I can use I I can add this metadata function. Okay, let me just replace this with a region. Okay, the region name is what? Central. Where, 
yeah it's 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 us it's us eu central one exactly okay um Okay, so uh, again, I'm going to copy this file. Oops. Just okay, I'm saving the file. Edit the file again. Yeah, it's here. Okay, so uh, I'm going to copy it. Oh, I should have configured some, uh, some uh, like SSH tunnels and things like that. But okay, uh, anyway. Yeah, I'm copying it here. Now I'm going to connect. I believe it will be faster to create uh, the, the Python Python script on that target. Yeah, I, I can just copy and paste that. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Oh, come on, it got stuck for something. Okay, anyway. Mm. Anyway, I'm going to SSH to the I see. Again, that's why uh, you might need the Git client, for example, in the in the in the content container, which we did not create it yet. Anyway, um, but that's okay. Uh, <clears throat> This is the job post. Let me pick up its IP address. Okay. Here I have the file. Let me see. Yeah, um, there. So uh, I can go here. Yeah, well, yeah, if I will need to uh, change anything, I, I can do it right here. But okay. Um, so uh, now I'm going to run, uh, let me do this. I'm going to create a separate folder for this script. I'm going to move it to that folder. Yeah. Uh, now I'm going to run a container. Come on, where I have this. Uh, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, ex execute this Docker command. Uh, 
uh, Docker run. The name of container would be, I don't know, uh, Python bottom three, for example. Uh, I'm going to mount a volume, which is uh, uh, its source is is the uh, is my home directory and this Python subfolder where I have this Python script that I'm going to use. And inside the, the container it would be up. And also, I'm going to use the interacting interactive connection to the container. Uh, and um, I want to remove the container right after the uh, uh, after uh, I, I exit from it. Yeah, this is good, but what is the image name? <laughs> Alpine column. Alpi Alpine, Alpine column Python, yes. Thank you. Uh, uh, okay, I'm here and let's see if it's going to run. Uh, okay. Uh, Okay, let's let's open uh separate tab. It only prints the function information because the function yeah, yeah, yeah. is because, because, because uh yeah. Uh, so it, it gets something I don't know what. I, I it, it should not be able to actually it should not be able to execute uh, this command because because I, I did not pass credentials and I did not assign an uh, attachment uh, the uh, I am role so I think it, it's it, it's uh... could it be because you call this uh, method without providing the parameter yeah we, we have some error Maybe. message in here uh well actually it should be a uh... JSON or di dictionary. I would expect dictionary there. In in uh, the print uh, in the print function, you're calling the method without passing the metadata. So you have this uh, the metadata in the parameter, but you're not calling. Oh, uh, sorry, guys. Yeah, you're right. So uh, and by the way, yeah. Uh, metadata. Okay, we don't need the metadata data actually. So we don't need any any uh, arguments for this function. So okay, so it should look like this. Yes. But but I don't want but I don't want to uh, I don't want to copy it again. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to just. Come on, why why I'm not seeing the um, okay? Okay. Okay, let's let's do this. Let, let's exit from the container. Okay. Yeah, and get instances, and this is the function, right? Okay, uh, let's try to run. Okay, unable to locate credentials, right? So now we can try to uh, go to this uh, Docker host. Uh, 
okay um we, we can do what we can modify i am role and i can choose Which role do I have? Uh, it's not really nice, but I'm going to assign. Uh, I'm wondering why I'm not seeing the, uh, the role that I created anyway. the roles that I I think this one should have all permissions that I need. Okay, let's try to assign this one to, to the instance. Hmm. Should I should I maybe use it's like we yeah, run this I, 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 yeah I this let's see okay I'm wondering why it's not anyway okay let's create and just create a new role. Um, let's call it let's call it the care host okay I'm going to use it okay EC2 I'm going to search for EC2. Full access. Okay, I'm going to use full access. Okay. Okay, I have this token post role. I'm wondering if I'm gonna be able to okay, I have it here. Okay, let's see if uh now. Okay, get uh get dog is not defined. Okay. I'm 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 using this get dog function in the original script, which is not defined here anyway. Okay. Uh let me just insert it in here. Okay, this is not what I want. Get back. All right. Yeah, uh, now it worked. It, it 
it probably doesn't look really nice, but we can, we were able to get this list of dictionaries where we have all the details about our um, uh, our instances here. So that was uh, like actually that was an idea to show how we can uh, leverage this containerized environment to execute a Python ad hoc script to get some details and we don't need to install this Python dependencies uh, directly on the machine. We could, of course, but in this case, it's only both or three. But uh, for example, if you, if you uh, would intend to connect to each machine to get some information from the operating system level, here we have, as, as you can see, we have uh, Windows machines and Linux machines. And uh, to connect to them, you should use, as you know, the different technologies, likely. So uh, for Windows, you should use, uh, we, you could use WinRM. So uh, I actually, uh, my current project, I created a script that uh, used Paramico module to connect to the, uh, to the Linux machines and WinRM module to connect to uh, Windows machines and also, uh, I had to uh, I use CloudWool to uh, retrieve uh, credentials from it, namely uh, uh, SSH private keys and the passwords to connect to Windows uh, machines. So for that, we might need a, lo a lot of uh, Python dependencies and modules uh to be imported so so uh it's not very convenient to install everything on on the on the host machine here right so that was an idea uh okay uh maybe you have any questions comments at, at this at this point because we kind of <laughs> don't, we don't have much time Okay, if no, I suggest to uh, proceed. Uh, I have we are... so, yeah, sure. Is this, so is this for uh, is this suitable for daily routine or just for the one uh, time task? Uh, for the daily routine, if we if we, we have a process, I don't think it's suitable. We should use some. Uh, uh, I don't know. We can use Chef, for example. Uh, we can use Ansible AWX, where we can gather all kinds, all sorts of information about our instances. If we are talking about about the instances, but it might be uh, that. Uh, you you comes to new uh, you can come to a new team, and you uh tasks to get uh, some to systemize some information about uh like infrastructure resources here, uh like here in this simplified case, and you just don't have time to read through all documentation and to understand and and to, or to get all accesses. I don't know. Uh, different cases could be that it is simpler to if, for example, if if you just uh, need uh, to check uh, what the uh, I don't know if the uh, some antivirus program is installed on all the machines. Normally, it should be a. Uh, some centralized tools where you can visually, like you have a, a nice dashboard where, where you can see all this stuff. But uh, the right chances are that you don't have uh, such a tool, and you. Uh, but you have to understand uh, where uh, particular software software is installed and uh, and where it's not. Or, for example, let's let's talk about only the AWS infrastructure. Uh, you might need to summarize information 
of the instance types that simple to uh, to evaluate how much it costs yeah there are tools that are more convenient to do that but there are cases where it, it's it's better and more convenient to just create a ad hoc script to get some information for example or to do some changes also it's it's not in a in case we need to change something on the hot, it's 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 not really a good idea to use the scripts. Yeah, because uh, like uh, we won't be able to uh, to save state of this current state of this machine machines uh, somewhere. It's just a script. It, it 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 does its job, and it it, it and you never knows, uh, and nobody knows, nobody can see what. Uh, was really done. So yeah, but okay. Uh, I hope I answered your question. For some cases, it's 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 convenient it, and it's useful to use this ad hoc script. Uh, the main goal is to have that uh, uh like that option. Yes. To reach something behind uh inside the private subnet, right? So it's... For example. You you have access, yeah. You have access to this machine, and you can you you have rights to assign this role, which allows which allows uh, a process from this machine, as as we could see, uh, to uh, to work uh, to interact with AWS API, and for example, it's 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 um it's a normal case, usual case. We, when you are not as a user, you are not allowed to. Uh, Create your own uh, SSH, not SSH. Sorry, uh, AWS keys. So you could do the same thing from from your local host if you would uh, be allowed to go here, for example, to the users and uh, pick up your user, right? And go to security right. credentials here, Thanks. right? Yeah. But but yeah, but it's a, it's a usual case when you are not allowed to do that. But uh, you could have access to this machine, which have this uh, yeah, role assigned to it, so that you can uh, do, do this stuff. Oh, okay. Okay. Small uh, note, small note, probably you will find it interesting uh the yes. if uh, the visual studio code has that uh built-in uh i suppose it's built-in uh a feature called dev containers and yes uh, you yes can, yeah 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 that's that's what i was about to start talking about yeah and it's, it's really nice and it's it's like uh, to be honest with you guys, I'm not sure that we have time to discuss all, all that, but uh, we can just uh, like switch to the next slide and uh, like uh, discuss the general concept. So yeah, for example, uh, Visual Studio Code has this integration or uh, uh, extension that allows us to use a Dockerized container environments. Yeah, uh, so. I think I can show you. So what it does actually, uh, it bundles everything a developer needs. Uh, remember, as we, like we discussed, uh, application uh, might need a little stuff to to be able to run. Right? Like in in case we have a binary file, it only it needs a operating system to run, and then some some hardware resources are also network connectivity to connect to some other services and stuff like that. But for the developer, uh, it's different. Uh, usually, this guy needs a lot of things to uh, to be uh, packaged into the container image or some configuration files. So uh, yeah. Uh, Again, we are using that same containers here. And this uh, environment could be, uh, it should be consistent at, uh, and it could be repeat, repeatable. So as long as you uh, run this container, which, uh, which 
bundles everything you need on your machine and you know uh, you are, do not delete this container you can have any extension that you installed inside this container uh, any extension that you like uh, some syntax highlighting debuggers all all kinds of stuff that uh, developers usually use uh, here in, in the visual code studio uh, the thing is when you delete this container uh you're gonna lost all this all, all this stuff and to to make it persistent well uh i'm not sure that we have time to discuss that but uh yeah we can use this json structure basically where we can can declare um, like describe everything that we need to um everything that we need to uh uh repeat uh, your developer environment or you can uh like newcomer can come to the team and you can handle him this json file which i think i could show you that an example and uh, he or she can easily install that on his or her machine okay uh i think um yeah extensions no this is the only extensions uh uh my bad guys uh <laughs> Uh, I don't really remember. So yeah, there is uh, some Ruby stuff in here, but I I'm pretty sure. Okay, let me run. Let me run the. Okay, since we have a demo here, let me run the Visual Studio instance. Okay, I don't think we are okay. We have some files. Oh, okay, uh, guys, to be honest with you, I think uh, this topic, me, uh, namely the uh, Visual Studio integration uh, extension, uh, this container, uh, containerized in, uh, develop, uh, development environments for uh, as a Visual Studio code extension, it's a topic which deserves like a separate discussion. But uh, okay, another there I, uh, again, another topic that I wanted to discuss. This is the uh, dev space. Uh, dev space, dev space development uh, developer tool, which interacts actually with Kubernetes. Uh, it is client only. It is. Uh, extremely easy to install. It's just one binary. Uh, <clears throat> it uses uh, your uh, current Kubernetes context. If you have Minikube, for example, it, it connects to Minikube. If, if you are connected to some cloud, Kubernetes uh, cluster, it could use that. You can switch between them. Uh, the like the feature here is that it uses, it supports hot reload. So you can even, uh, uh, when you, you can even have, for example, you are development, developing uh, Java application. And usually you, you make some changes in the code, then you uh, run Marvin Builder to, uh, to create the, your jar file, which is, is then is injected into the container. And once, so uh, like normally, by default, uh, dev space in this case would, uh, once the jar file got changed, it uh, start this hot reloads. And in the Kubernetes cluster, uh, to which the uh, Dev space is connected right now. Uh, in that Kubernetes cluster, uh, 
the containers got restarted. But you might want to uh, skip this this uh, part when you need to run this Maven builder, and we, you, want, you might want to do it automatically. And that is also supported. Uh, but again, uh, that's my bad, of course, but we don't have time today to discuss that. If if somebody would want to discuss it, maybe later on, I, I could prepare something. Uh, so, uh, yes, so, the main goal of this tool is that it, like many um, tools of, of that sort, it it uh, streamlines streamlines the workflow, uh, automates some repetitive tasks, as I mentioned. So ideally, if you are developing uh, developing some application that needs to be compiled or bundled into a package like a jar, jar file, as I mentioned. You can automate all the steps on the build steps, uh, like it, it, you, and you can do it locally, because normally uh, you you would do what you um, make some changes in the Java code, then you uh, make a commit and push to the to the uh, remote uh, Git repository, for example, and then it triggers some CI pipeline, which do all this stuff, uh, builds the application, deploys it, it somewhere and runs it. But you might want to check some minor small change right away uh, without waiting. So uh, the main idea here that uh, this tool is supposed to speed up uh, the iterations. Yeah, so maybe some questions here about, namely about the dev space, and maybe I would be able to answer them. Because unfortunately we don't have a time for a demo. <laughs> Looks like no questions. Okay. Okay, we are skipping demo. demo. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, do you have any questions in general? Well, maybe comments, suggestions, feedbacks, everything uh, is welcome. 